Good morning, everyone. My name is Mighty Stream, and I'm going to do your May the 11th just for today in a meditation. If you need to reach me, feel free to do so at recoveryofhope21 at gmail.com. I am amazed that we are already in the month of May, almost at the halfway mark, the 11th. Oh, my goodness. Okay. The title of our meditation for today is Balancing the Scales. A lot of our chief concerns and major difficulties come from our inexperience with living without drugs. Often when we ask an old timer what to do, we are amazed at the simplicity of the answer. Basic text, page 43. Finding balance in recovery is quite a bit like sitting down with a set of scales and a pile of sand. The goal is to have an equal amount of sand on each side of the scales, achieving a balance of weight. We do the same thing in recovery. We sit down with the foundation of our clean time in the 12 steps, then attempt to add employment, household responsibilities, friends, sponsees, relationships, meetings, and service in equal weights so that the scales balance. Our first try may throw our personal scales out of kilter. We may find that because of our over-involvement in service, we have upset our employer or our family. But when we try to correct this problem by resigning from NA service altogether, the other side of the scales go out of balance. We ask for help from members who have stabilized their scales. These people are easy to recognize. They appear serene, composed, and self-assured. They smile in recognition at our dilemma and share how they slow down, adding only a few grains of sand at a time to either side of the scales and were rewarded with balance and recovery. Just for today, I seek balance in my life. Today, I will ask others to share their experience in finding that balance. Let's take a moment of silence followed by the we version of the serenity prayer. Moment of silence now, please. Thank you. God, grant us the serenity to accept the things that we cannot change, the courage to change the things that we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Please and thank you. What a wonderful meditation. This meditation is interesting to me because I'm having flashbacks, literally thinking about balancing the scales and thinking about how little I knew about living life without using. Now, I started using at quite an early age, not by choice. I was given a strong, you know, strong Barcardi at a very early age. And I just wonder how much of my, you know, system became dependent, my function became dependent on that alcohol. I picked up some behaviors early on as far as uh, I would make hot sugar water and sip on that like I, it was tea. And I thought I was really grown at a small age right? At a very young age. So I can really identify with this statement that 
most of my major concerns, chief concerns, major difficulties did come from my inexperience with living without drugs. Now, once the drug was in my system, it automatically kicked into gear a certain behavior pattern. And that behavior pattern was what I would call my, my mask, my survival skills, my ability to get what I wanted when I wanted in from several people, right? Although I found that if there was one particular type of drug that I would use, my judgment, the defensiveness wasn't there. My judgment would be very off. And I would find myself in the worst predicament. Most of the rape, most of the, I would consider life-threatening circumstances that I found myself in came directly from this one particular drug that I would use it threw my judgment off considerably. And so when I came into the program, I white knuckled it, first of all, because I was being invited. I was being told I was an addict and I was being invited to a world convention in 1993, all expenses paid, under the assumption, <laughs> the false assumption that I was actually going to support another relative's recovery. And I found myself just swept away by the information that I was learning. And what I learned more than anything else was that what I knew about living without drugs was nil. I got into the program and I decided to try to save a particular group that was being taken advantage of by the GSR. And I I was, you know, because I worked in finances initially, uh, I would say about mm, probably easily the first 10 years of my employment, beginning with um, even before I graduated from high school working with the IRS in our town when it was here. And they they uh, conducted bankruptcy courts here. And so I worked for IRS during the summer. And so I just developed this natural instinct for finances. And when I attended this meeting for the first time, I could tell that there was something off about the finances. And so I decided to get myself into service work and basically in my mind, save this group. Um, because the GSR was using the finances, the seven tradition to feed his family and making sure the coffee was still there and a few cookies here and there. And so I got into service work with this Captain Sava group <laughs> disposition and it set me up for an oppositional frame of mind anytime I was involved with service work. So then when I would get to area, I naturally assumed that they were crooks as well. And I didn't have the attitude, oh, we're all in this together. I had the attitude that the GSR was a crook. Uh, there was not a treasurer for the group. The GSR was actually the treasurer, the secretary, all of those positions, just over involved in service, right? And so I dove into service with this attitude of find what's wrong with Narcotics Anonymous. And before I knew it, no one was really engaging me. It was me against the world. And I learned then that I use drugs 
to make my disposition more uh, agreeable. And the using of drugs was what allowed me to be more relatable. And it became a part of my social development. So now my social development was completely off, basically. Even in the cleaning up, <laughs> getting clean, I didn't know anything about maintaining friendships or working as a team. Everything was skewed. And I really became upset with the fact that I wasn't having the impact and influence that I was having on people the way that I did when I was using. And so I went through that learning curve. Uh, I took on a lot of service work. It became a part of my personal recovery. And the other part of Narcotics Anonymous, the making the meetings and the working with a sponsor and doing the step work was less important to me because this service work on the area level was way more influential, right? It was about looks more than prestige, actually, more than what is truly intended when we say trusted service positions, right? And I burned out. I burned out till this day. I would say there's very few things that I do that are related to serving Narcotics Anonymous, right? Um, on that level. I cannot, I absolutely abhor the thought of being involved at the area level. I abhor it. So I'm still being affected by my over-involvement in service. Now, there was an international in a meeting that um, I was involved in making sure that we were able to go around the clock 24 hours on Zoom platform. And I poured all of my service during the pandemic into that platform, okay? And eventually I decided that eight hours a week of my life was way too much to give away for free. It was burning me out. I was taking the wee hours in the morning. People were calling me to replace them when they couldn't make their own wee hours in the morning. So I found sometimes I would be up to one, two in the morning, turn around, wait back up for my shift around five. And it was just way too much. And so I pulled back, but I didn't pull back just a little bit. I completely stopped. And when I stopped, I was in for a rude awakening. Here I call myself trying to balance my skills. And now all of a sudden it's off kilter again because I'm not doing any service work. Now I'm attending the meeting and supporting, but I'm not doing any service work. And if you know anything about the Zoom platform, when you're hosting People can communicate with you. So a lot of my fellowshipping was taking place between, right? A lot of my outreach to newcomers, supporting the newcomers that couldn't share, was taking place in between me opening the mics for certain people to share for however long, however many minutes, four minutes that they had to share. And I found that I missed it. I found that I became depressed. I found that I had more negative interactions with people. I found that I was more intolerant of people. And I said, what? What in the world? Okay. You thought you were balancing it, but you took it completely off the table. And so now you're out of whack. And I immediately looked at my schedule and said, what can you reasonably do, Mighty Strength? 
What can you reasonably do? And do you know what I did? <laughs> you will never believe this. I, I say you would never believe it, but I picked up one hour and I held on to that one hour a week, going from eight hours to one hour a week. Oh my goodness, how embarrassing. I can't give more than one hour to this life-saving 24-7 meeting. You know what? I was like, you know what, girl? If you're thinking like that, you don't even need to be doing the one hour, actually, because it is not about you. Well, it was about me because of the feeling that I got from giving back was life-saving. And that one hour was enough to pull me out of my depression. Right? And here I find myself again, now that we're talking, feeling this depression creeping back in because I've stepped away from that one hour because I'm completely overwhelmed with this internship, right? And so now I know, yeah, you've had this pattern of pulling back when things get intense, but you need to figure out how you can do more. Now I have a home group on Mondays that I always always post on the zoom platform it's a hybrid meeting it's in the comments down below on monday and we need support it's a small quaint meeting so if you're used to those meetings with 25 30 no 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 it's a rare occasion that we hit 10 then we have a couple three people maybe in person it's a small quaint meeting and the sharing is not timed people are able to share until they have exhausted what they needed to with I mean being considerate of others and I invite you to that meeting it's called feel the love group of narcotics anonymous my name is mighty stream and I've enjoyed expounding on this today balancing the scales our scales together I hope that you will do the same and have a beautiful day on purpose talk to you soon